Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux Newslog is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com. Check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, for those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into some of the cool stories uh, that we have uh, for this episode. Starting off over at Ars Technica in their gear and gadgets uh, section, product news and reviews, Linux on the NUC using Ubuntu, Mint, Fedora, and the Steam OS beta. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with this, the NUC, pronounced N-U-C, or spelled N-U-C, is Intel's uh, platform, and it stands for Next uh, Unit of Computing. And the article starts off here, one of the drawbacks of buying a bare-bones PC, like Intel's NUC, at least if you're a Windows user, is that it comes with no operating system. For me, that's not really an issue. Uh, the big PC OEMs get Windows at a steep discount to end, compared to end users, and you'll have to pay somewhere in the neighborhood of $100 for a full OEM Windows license, and more if you want a retail version with tech support. The other side of that coin is that bare-bones PCs can be good for people who aren't planning on paying for an OS. That's where the NUC comes in. It's actually pretty good performance, all things considered. Uh, you can use your favorite Linux distribution on a bare bones PC without paying for the added cost of some Windows license if you have no in, that you have no intention of using. So uh, this uh, basically is a quick rundown of the various uh, things that uh, you can install on the NUC. Uh, they've got some uh, power consumption. Ubuntu 13.10 uh, uses just over six and a half watts idle at the desktop. Linux Mint is about the same. Fedora 20 about the same. Uh, Steam OS Beta as of January 31st, 2014 is 8.2 watts. Uh, and Windows 8.1 x64 is 6.4 watts. They've got uh, basically, uh, it's a really nice rundown. For those of you who are looking for uh, potentially a, a a relatively bare bones PC along the lines uh, in form factor of like a Mac Mini or something of that nature, definitely check out uh, the next unit of computing. You get a fair amount of flexibility for installing uh, the operating systems of your choice. From itworld.com, how to run Linux on a Chromebook. This is a nice little rundown on how, on how to uh, install and run Linux on your uh, Google Chromebook, if that's what you want to do. Definitely check this out. Uh, Chromium OS uh, Universal Troot Environment, which is Crouton, is what you kind of want to run simultaneously. Uh, gives it basically a quick rundown how to add a Linux, uh, desktop Linux to the Chromebook, etc., etc. Pretty good uh, uh, summary of the steps that you need to take in order to get it done. From EnterpriseNetworkingPlanet.com, Dell embraces the Cumulus Linux, Cumulus Linux for networking. That's right. Dell is no stranger to Linux, having supported it on its server portfolio as well as its networking gear. Now, Dell is expanding its Linux networking effort by enabling its customers to choose Linux, specifically the Cumulus Linux distribution, as a network operating system on a pair of Dell switches. Pretty neat. Uh, Arpit Josh Shapira, the VP of Dell Networking, told Enterprise Networking Planet that server buyers have long had the ability to choose the operating system they want. Now that same choice is coming to the networking realm. So pretty neat. Definitely check it out if that's something you're looking to do. From uh, LinuxInsider.com, installing Linux, the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's right. Good or bad, useful or not, implementation of the unified extensible firmware interface and Microsoft's secure boot extension might well foul the fuel driving consumer migration to the Linux desktop. 
So this is a basic rundown. Uh, we've been covering UEFI-related issues for quite some time. Um, you may or may not be able to see this in the background, but right about uh, here or so is uh, a minnow board. Um, I've been doing some experimenting with it. And interestingly enough, it is UEFI only. There is no classical BIOS on there. So, you know, getting, <laughs> getting stuff to run on, this has actually been kind of a challenge. Um, the, the Linux that comes with it, uh, it it's, you know, it's a pre-installed image. If you're gonna do anything uh, with regards to that, you kind of have to follow, you know, have that running already and then kind of chain stuff on top of it. Um, pretty interesting. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things, and this doesn't even have secure boot. Secure boot. It's just straight up UEFI. So uh, I, I feel the pain. Uh, this uh, has a basically a pretty nice rundown of, of you know, what it kind of sucks about it and, and what uh, is done really well. So definitely check it out if you're trying to get Linux installed and running on a UEFI system. From AutomatedTrader.net, simplifying the installation of Oracle Database on Oracle Linux. This is a reprint uh, from the magazine article. So uh, definitely uh, check this out if you are looking to install Oracle Database on Oracle Linux. It's, it's something that you know apparently some people do. Uh, from American University Intellectual Property Briefs, Google becomes the seventh member of the Open Invention Network. Google recently joined IBM, NEC, Novell, Philips, Red Hat, and Sony as a full member of the Open Invention Network, otherwise known as the OIN, an organization that was formed to minimize patent aggression against free and open source software projects. Some commentators say that Google's decision reflects the extraordinary commercial success of its Android operating system for smartphones and tablets, and its Chrome OS browser operating system for computers, both of which are largely based on open source software. Free and open source software, including the seminal Linux operating system, is a computer software with its source code made available and licensed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So anyway, definitely check this out. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting to see what Google has been doing uh, just with regards to. Uh, open source in general. Um, I've been following what they've been doing for quite some time. From Linux.com, Linux video of the week, self-in mobile OS updates. So there's a YouTube video here. I thought I would bring this up to everybody's attention. Uh, basically, it is, uh, actually, it's a couple videos. Selfish OS ported to Nexus 4 and demoing the first IRC client on the jo Jola. Um, definitely check these YouTube videos out. Like I said, everything is linked up in the show notes. So if it's something you want to see, uh, check out the show notes. From iprogrammer.info, smart home automation with Linux and Raspberry Pi. This is another one of those really fantastic articles. Uh, home automation is a hot topic at the moment, but it isn't an easy area to work in. Gee, I know. Can a book on Linux and Raspberry Pi sort it all out? Well, apparently it can. So that's the name of this book, Smart Home Automation with Linux and Raspberry Pi. The author is Stephen Goodwin. It's published by A Press. It's 328 pages. Um, the audience is for Linux experts. So if you're a newbie, you may want to spend a little bit of time kind of getting familiar with the Linux environment before you try any of these out. I've personally, I've not yet seen this book, although it sounds interestingly interesting enough that I may actually... Uh, acquire it and uh, just check it out and see what's available. Um, they've got a, a nice cover here. Let me see if I can zoom in on this thing. Yeah, there we go. A nice cover here. So definitely uh, check that out. Uh, pretty interesting. It's in its second edition. I've never even heard of it before. So should be pretty cool. That will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quickshift.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, for those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.